I'm Ruthie Hardy. I'm the founder of Ashiatsu Oriental Bar Therapy. How are you doing today? Um, I think what we're going to kind of do here is Jenny is doing some of our Ashi Thai. It's a brand new modality to hit the scene. Um, probably most famous uh, work that we're known for, of course, is our Ashiatsu Bar Massage. And anyway, what we're famous for is our Ashiatsu Oriental Bar Therapy, of course, the gliding, moving cream and oil effleurage that we do. But we had so many Thai therapists come and take our course over the last 20 years that we're already doing palm walking and doing traditional Northern Thai stretches. You know, when you have enough people ask you, hey, this looks so good, I wish I had bars to do the Thai moves that I love. Well, we put it together and organized a curriculum and now we're actually going to be featured in Massage Magazine next year. So we're very excited to bring Ashi Thai to the forefront and uh, Jenny's doing some IT band work here. So the cool thing about the Ashi Thai actually is the therapist is never bending at the waist. That's our big thing, you know. And so traditional Thai would be lifting, grasping, rolling, lifting some of the Chiatsu moves as well as really getting in here to lift. And so we've alleviated that with the use of the bars. She's got a good leverage system. And we really scoop up all the limbs with our feet and we can put them into any position that we want. One of the cool things also about Ashi Thai, clothed, totally clothed, both receiver and giver, all right, but it still is designed to be elevated off the floor because it's really all about the therapist. Now this might look invasive or intrusive, but it's absolutely fine. We're doing a wonderful stretch to her inguinal ligament. Jenny's arch is up on the ASIS, so she's not standing on any direct bone, and it's just really pressing, nice stretching through the whole pelvic gate. Traditional Thai, they used to do a thing called blood stop, and there's a lot of controversy about blood stop, not only in the USA, but around um, classes in general where we cut off the blood supply. So we're not going to do blood stop. That's our kind of version of that. Looks like, and everybody's got a different range of motion. Obviously, this young lady here, we're gonna walk, well, we're gonna work with her and see how far her range of motion is. Everybody has tight hamstrings. Everybody's hamstrings are pulling on their low back. So plow, traditional plow is done standing with the therapist pushing forward. And now Jenny, again, can stand straight up and down. Are we at full range of motion here? But there's always checking in with the client. We never force the clients to do anything. Anything, we would never take them past their own range of motion. Something that's interesting that we'll show you are the Ashi lines here in a minute too. You wanna do happy baby? Long time, long time Ashi Thai move called happy baby. Been around for centuries. Quite, quite the stretch to the lower lumbar. Okay. But what we're doing now is we're releasing our hands, grabbing the bar one more time, and just letting the heels rest on our own thighs. I'm gonna stand up. And again, it helps Jenny's back not have to bend and lift. Maybe you want to come around and get a better angle. All right, so in traditional Thai, palm walking, um, palm walking is done and they pay a lot of attention to the Zen lines or the Thai lines. And so a therapist would bend at the waist and do a lot of palm walking. And it is direct pressure on these different lines. And the thing about Thai that we all love is the rhythmic movement and the flow of palm walking. But years and years and years of palm walking 
can really be taxing to a therapist's palms, as we know. All right, let me play. And <laughs> we've kind of taken another step to palm walking called Ashi walk. We, we can we, Ashi walk with the toes, Ashi walk with the heels, and we can also do straight Ashi walking with the arch of our foot where we can go straight down on the limb. Jenny's doing basically a little double dog paddle up into the inguinal ligament here, being careful that we don't pinch any skin. This is called knee rolling. She's just cupping her feet underneath the knee. Traditional Thai knee rolling would be more like this with the palm. And we can give that same sensation and that same movement with the foot. Let's talk about the lines. So, three lines on the feet, the Zen lines and the Thai lines. And we have the same lines in Ashi, all right? We can either sit and do traditional thumb pressure. We can do palm walking, okay? But we've replaced it with windshield wiper. So again, instead of me twisting and petrissaging my fists or using my wrists and extending to do the palm walking, we're simply putting a lot of deep pressure here with our heel. So yummy, you can knock somebody out with these Zen lines. But really, the hands can do everything that the feet can do. We can manipulate and bolster the limbs so that we can turn the feet any way we want. Jenny's getting ready to go up the peroneal lines now. We, we like to do Ashi Thai with loose clothing. Anytime the clothing gets sponged up, we pull our feet down, straighten it out, and then keep going all the way up. So loose yoga pants, sweatpants, long sleeve shirt, those are some of the best things to receive Ashi Thai. So this is called tricep press, and we have another move called the scap trap, and we can work very efficiently all the upper shoulder work and arms, again, all with the feet, being careful not to touch the client's face. One of the reasons our uh, participant here is under a pillowcase and a headrest is because we just really, really like the eyes to be covered. It can help that person go into a nice vasodilation kind of mood. Stretching the shoulder capsule all the way to the elbow now. And again, some of the moves do require for us to lift the arms up and stretch. 